we can use a base to generate enolate structures. And if we want to do chemistry with the enolates, then it's nice to have ideas about how to drive this reaction so there is a large amount of enolate present. So on this slide, I'm giving you three examples of how to do that process. Let's concentrate on the top of the slide first of all, using a typical base, the hydroxide ion. So here we have our hydroxide ion driving that deprotonation. The product is more stable than the starting material because it's delocalized, so there is a driving force to make the enolate. It's an equilibrium, so there will be a balance of both structures at equilibrium. To influence that balance for a given ketone, then the thing to change is the base. In the middle here, I've got another oxygen-centered anion. That oxygen atom is now substituted by a tertiary butyl group, and that tertiary butyl group is putting electron density into the oxygen through its sigma bonds. It's an inductive effect. So the tertiary butoxide anion is more reactive than the hydroxide anion because instead of an H here, we've got a lot of electron-rich carbon-carbon bonds. So that's the first thing to say about it. It's more reactive. And if it's more reactive, it will influence the position of the equilibrium. We've increased the reactivity on the starting material side. So we would expect a greater concentration of the product at equilibrium. And I've represented that by the visual device of the different lengths of the arrow. However, before you now assume that you can use all highly reactive bases to drive enolate chemistry, let me remind you of a slight snag in that simple approach and then come back to the tertiary butoxide and show its second crucial feature for why it works well practically in this type of chemistry. The oxygen atom which is acting as a base in this chemistry, the oxygen atom is also a nucleophile. And with regard to the top example, you will get a significant amount of the enolate, but you'll also get the oxygen of the hydroxide ion adding to the ketone as a nucleophile to produce the anion that corresponds to the hydrate form. So let's compare now nucleophilicity. We've got two oxygen-centered anions. Hydrogen, very small. Tertiary butyl group, pretty large. Large enough to make the oxygen atom hindered as a nucleophile. So the tertiary butoxide is deactivated as a nucleophile because it's bulky. But pulling out a hydrogen from an alpha mesar group next to the ketone, the bulk matters less. So it's still a powerful functional base, but it's much less nucleophilic. So there's a general strategy to try to influence the equilibrium with enolates. You want a more reactive base, but you've got to, at the same time, cut down the nucleophilicity of that base. Now let's look at the third example. Key difference here, I hope you've noticed N versus O. Nitrogen atoms are less good at stabilizing negative charge than oxygen atoms. That structure is an even more powerful base. And what about this nuclear velocity issue? Well, we've got isopropyl groups here. These are bent three carbon atom chains, and we've got two of them. So we've got lots of hydrocarbon blocking around this nitrogen center, just as we had hydrocarbon blocking around the oxygen center of the tertiary butoxide. That lower structure is an excellent base and a very poor nucleophile. And it's the one which you would most typically pick if you wanted to push the equilibrium ketone versus enolate well across towards the enolate. So it's the most powerful of the driving forces. The strongest of the bases that I've been talking to you about in that last section is generated from this amine, which is diisopropyl amine. And when you take a hydrogen off an amine to generate the N minus center, the chemical name for that sort of structure is amide. The simplest amide is what you would get if you take ammonia, NH3, and take one hydrogen from it. That will be NH2 minus. That's a simple amide, not good for making enolates. Why not? Well, it's got hydrogens, it's not bulky, so it's a nucleophilic base. If you do the same thing with a bulky amine, you get a bulky amide. And the other example I gave you is tertiary butoxide. So those are our two special bases that feature in control of the enolate chemistry and the explanation for how come they're special. More reactive negatively charged centers and basicity emphasized over nucleophilicity by exploiting steric effects.